Welcome to this episode of TDD for Simple Algorithms. In this episode, I am going to implement a small program that will tell me who is a winner in a cards game. The game is very simple. There are two players who are dealt the same amount of cards, whatever the number is. They cannot change the order of the cards. Round by round, they show up a card, and the player with the highest one according to the rank scores a point. At the end of the game, the winner is the player with the highest score. I have analyzed the problem and created a list of examples that will lead me to the final solution taking small steps. The easiest game I can think of is the one with a single car, as there is only one point. Moreover, a single car game may also come out with a tie. Later on, I will handle games with several cards and perhaps a few hero cases. I want a function who wins to have two arguments, each representing a pack as an array of cards, and I want it to return a human readable string with the result. Let me start up Mocha, the test runner, in the other terminal, so that it will run all the tests whenever I save the file. For now, I'm gonna write the production code in the same file, and to make sure I haven't made any typo, I wanna see my first test green very fast. Okay, it works, but I know the hard-coded literal is not going to help me triangulate towards the solution. I know I have to compare the two cards, so let's go for it. And the test is green. I'm gonna finish off all the games with a single card, making the code more generic test by test. Up until now, I've used the ASCII value as a car value, but this is not true for the case of the king and the queen. I decided to express the car rank with a string so that I can find the car value by getting the character's position within the string. And the test is green. Code is now complete for single car games. Let's go for several cards.
It looks like I need to iterate over the card packs, but introducing a loop at this point seems to be too of a big step. I am going to make the test pass just for two cards, as if there were no loop statements in this language. The fact that there are more than one round forces me to keep track of the score. Here is where I prefer to introduce duplication rather than the loop. And the test is green. At this point, the code is asking me to make it more generic using the loop. I can clearly see it. The reason why I define the variable i out of the loops block is because JavaScript will host it as if it was declared at the top of the function. In JavaScript, code blocks don't create their own scope for variables, only functions do. So by doing this behavior explicit, I might save all the developers or myself from trouble. Right, it works, and it's pretty generic, but the function is too big. I like my functions to do only one thing and to be short. Sometimes they contain just one line. By taking advantage of the power of the language when it comes to functions, I can create nested functions as a first step to extract new ones. These two happen to be closures. A closure is a function referencing three variables. This is variables that have been defined in an outer scope of the function. It's much cleaner now, and all the tests pass. However, this is not the end, as I should keep on refactoring and also handle other cases in our to-do list. In the upcoming episodes, we'll see how to refactor using both the functional and the object-oriented paradigm, as well as how to clean up the tests.